because it lasted all this time. It's the test. Man, it should have been better. Should have gotten diesels, right? It's the test. So then I actually was position for a little bit, and then I came back and started working. I started working the Valley Wear with them. I know the Valley Wear. Yeah, the heads going up and down, right. and they're really neat. And it, the way it's kind of working is steam locomotives had their era, and like it's around the World War. Most everything got moved in the World War by, I guess, two. <laughs> Not three. About a uh, steam, and um, then out of that era came the guys that were dedicated to doing steam, you know, steam preservation and, and working on them. And I came in after those guys. So at the Valley Railroad, those are the guys I got the making of, right? Dave Conrad, some guys, well, I know Lynn Monier, guys that, it's all the old school. Mike, you know who uh, Bob Carlson, <laughs> he's old school. Well, I know too. Of Conrad, too. Yeah. What a, actually, great guy. Weird. No, no, I, weird. Yes. What a great guy. Weird. So, so yeah, right? From you, right? Right? Well, we're trying, trying to find out of us in this business that are weird. We don't like weird. Get out now! <laughs> That would be weird to do. Yeah. Yeah. Doyle, right? Doyle, McCormick. You guys know who that is? Yeah. Yeah. He's a sweetheart. He's a good guy. I've met him years ago. And I and again, I keep a low profile so people don't get mad. I can talk. But so where, where I'm going with all of this is that I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about how nasty it is trying to get one to run. So if you guys have a steam locomotive, you're thinking about getting one. Like my friend up at the Kinetic Farm. Besides, you want to see what the middle Because, you know, how hard can this be? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Here <laughs> the laughing. How hard can this be? T1, right in the northern. <clears throat> and I, I think it was... What did, did anybody know what it advertised about how much they spent? One and a half. One and a half. It's like one, one and a half. half. One point two. Uh, one I worked on it. Six and a half years. Yeah, then they broke it right away, too. Thanks! There were some things as soon as they move them. In, in deference to Reading Northern, so I work for them too. My own lawyer makes me say that. Um, in deference to them, it is an insanely complex locomotive. Insanely. And Andy wanted it right out the door. He wanted to pull the train right away. I mean, he wanted that thing right away. He's the boss. So, and this happens a lot on these steam restorations. I'm hoping that we don't do it here. But, you know, we're running to people. But we probably could spend another fixing stuff. Oh, dude, and there's still, there's an axle thing. It had an axle thing from years ago. Oh, yeah. That's, you know, right? It's a 50-year Yeah, this has been right going there. on forever. So, again, if you see these things running, it's incredibly special. So, you get your steam locomotive. Let's see if we can move this down the thing. You finally get that locomotive you always wanted. I know you all want it. Get it on. And so, yeah. you take it home. And we'll use my friend up at Connecticut, the farm guy. He's a, just to give you some background, he's a police officer. He has a farm in Connecticut. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And he's an Italian family with nice people. And they give you dinner. If you go there, you just get dinner. The mom feeds you and she gives you water and everything. Like, it's weird. But he doesn't quite know about steam lifting this. So now he gets some local motor. He saw it on the internet. Whatever. Steam are us. Buys it. How could you not? How could it go wrong? They always look complete and yeah, perfect, and all you need to do is fire right there. You got yeah. levers, let's go! Yeah. Let's go! A water, a little, little fire, and you're good to go. It's a nightmare. <laughs> it's a nightmare. I have a sheet from it over here, which we can, you know, we'll show you a little bit later if you guys want to look at something to go on. It was in Canada, and then one of the engineers that actually used to run steam up there said, oh, I'm going to keep this one for the He left water in it. Oh. It froze. Pipes cracked. He never cleaned out the boiler. You guys got to see the side sheet. It's not a big locomotive, but again, I am three years in for restoration. Of course, I'm the only guy going up there. Don't know I'm coming up to do it, but I get dinner. <laughs> Makes it all work. <laughs> but we're three years in, and it was advertised when they sold it to them, ready to run, ready, <laughs> to, ready to run, and we're having a sheet plan for that one and everything. So. When you get one of these, the first thing to do, and everybody can say, here's the next question. I'm sure somebody's going to look at me and go, what the hell's wrong with them? I have an inspection. Right? You find a car and you can pick it inside. There's a lot to take off. This is a tank. So you really need to take the cab off. You need to take the tank off. You know, the tank off. You need to get all that apart. And then there's tubes in there. Tubes and tubes. I'm 
knowing anybody has general information about how steam locomotive works, I'm thinking you guys know. If you don't, stop me. But you really need to inspect the barrel. You need to look at that original seal in there, that, you know, how thick it is, can it withstand the tent? I mean, we're going to bring Jesse in on that one in, in a little bit about how fun it is to do all the calculations. But you really need the thickness in all this original steel. So if someone said to me, can you inspect this locomotive and say, hey, I need to restore it and give me a price and give me time. I'm like, yeah, no, yeah, no. So you take it apart and you find out that one of the seams is bad. Or you can see that the dome has a leaky rivet. Well, we got to fix that, you know, obviously pull it out, put a new one in. It's really hard to see any of this stuff before you actually get into it. You know what I mean? Until you start turning wrenches and you actually... I know. I'm just it's great. Biting my tongue. You guys missed some of the show earlier, too. Over here. <laughs> you can ask me how that we're here. You guys can fill them in. Holy moly. And then we're going to get rained on. And so get on the internet. We should say we're going to rain on my wife. <laughs> so, as you get this thing disassembled, there's two parts. You have a boiler. Now this is just to put the thing back together and get it to run. Boiler and running. Now, I'm a boiler guy. I just do boilers. All I do is the, the steel work and, you know, try to rivet and put things back together so that they won't walk. That's it. That's basically it. The, and you'll hear this from Jesse soon. The boiler has a certain length of time that it's certified for. Now, there's different codes that go underneath. People have some state. I think you were talking about the traction engine, right, with the state code. And, and sadly, don't ask me anything, any of the particulars. And again, my lawyers tell me, if I give you any numbers, I'm not responsible for anything. But there's literally a code spelled out that your boiler has to be able to put water in it, pump the water when it's even leaks, you know? And there's a code that'll spell out how thick things need to be. There's an FRA, Federal Railroad Administration. You guys probably heard of those guys. Those are the ones that do a lot of the, what we're dealing with here soon. Right, Jesse? Yep. Okay. Good. That's correct. Right. The lawyer says I can say that. Yep. Um, so we actually have guys come down from the federal government and inspect our work and look at what we were doing and, and <laughs> hopefully sit there and go, oh, what a wonderful job these people have been here. What a mess. Mm -hmm. mess these people have but, and then there's other codes. There's actually an ASME about new build for if you're building a new boiler. An ASME code to build a new boiler. So it's under that code. So there's there's a little overlap if you guys ever have any, you know, any luck looking at any of this stuff. But point being, now I finally disassembled my locomotive, my boiler, and I'm going to start identifying the areas that thin sheets. I take it, let's take two minutes and look at the thin sheet over here if you guys want to. Let's look at a thin sheet. So this is what we deal with. Do you want me to sign this? No. Right now. Yes. <laughs> yes. You're a yes, celebrity. Please sign it. <laughs> Linda sent me over. Use that as a prop. Your choo choo miss. Oh, Jesus. Okay, goodbye. Put that on the, as a prop somewhere. Oh. So, let me show you guys. This is whoever can gather around. This is, this is fun. This is where fun begins. So, this is this Connecticut engine. And believe it or not, that's the length of the firebox on the Connecticut engine. Isn't that great? You can see it's missing a chunk over here. So I'm going to let you guys do this. I'm going to let you guys, somebody, do we have a volunteer? Not the ladies, the ladies aren't allowed to do this. So this is the, yeah! Right, okay. Dude, right. Western Maryland, you're my man, get on over here. Get on over here. So this is what we do. This is, and this is how glamorous it is. That's why people really want to do what I do. Come on over. Get in. Come in. KY Dylan? Yes. Yep. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Folks, there's always one. There's always one in the room. Well, yeah, when you run out, before, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, yep. Very neat. And again, if you guys got questions, <laughs> stop me and ask. Very neat. So back in the day, <laughs> the old longer. guys would used to look at, go in the firebox <laughs> and they'd look. And if they saw bulges, so here's your stable holes. That holds things together. You guys hit for that. There's pressure and there's water in the middle two sheets, and these are stable. So if there was a big bulge here, which there was on the door sheet on this book, and that's another thing. They'll look at it, and they'll say, oh boy, that doesn't look good. And now we have the magic of technology. I'm going to show you what this does. This is, this is a UT tester. It's an ultrasonic tester. So it sends out a, a wave. It's pretty cool. I'm calibrating for you to see you get it right. 
What's your name? Chase. Hi, Chase. How you doing? I'm chill. Yeah, this you just signed a shit seminar, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope. Point two. See it. All right, Chase, you're up. Uh -oh. This is Chell Benner on a sweaty night by himself, not allowed to get out of the firebox. So I'm in the firebox. You see the shiny bit? See the shiny bit? Oh, yeah. So you put your goo on here. Okay. Get some goo, right? <laughs> and stuff it on the plate. Right. Stuff it there. See where I was at? And now hold it down. Push on that thing. Everybody seeing that? So I got three six zero. So I'm supposed to have three eighth plate. Who knows what three eighth plate is? Yes, you guys are smart. <laughs> <laughs> so I got three six zero. I'm going. This is great. This <laughs> engine's fine. Yeah. Check here. Let's check a few spots here. <laughs> check those three different the, yeah, ones that were already marked. Oh, uh, you gonna make him do the middle one or the bottom one? Uh, uh, Chase, you go get it. Chase, what, get whatever you want to get. One. It's gonna get rained on. Bottom. I heard bottom. So here's Chell. Now push down on that. Oh! You might have problems. Oh, yeah. Chell's oh, what? thinking what? about what he's getting for dinner. Yeah, just push on the top. Yeah. Look at that number, kids. Now I'm yeah, thinking to myself. I'm thinking to myself, if three eighth plate, there's no way that's right. So Chell goes back in. Let's go to the middle. Right. Let's go Great. there, Chase. Yeah. We're gonna get so rained on. You know what? And here, this is fun. <laughs> See I'm if it gives us another. Uh... <laughs> it's like, all right, like, go there. See what else? Push on it. Two. One. Oh. 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 God, dude, that's terrible. <laughs> oh, go back up here. It's got to be better than that. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. way. We really need to get rained on. Yep. Uh, we're running the trees, so maybe there. Not. I'm good. I'm good. Go back on. down. No. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Nice. So this yeah. happened in this locomotive. This is the one that, by the way, you remember what I said, was sold as ready to go. Huh? And we will do the great review. Ready to go is right. Ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> Can you see what happened? Oh, yeah. You guys, feel free to touch. Feel free to touch. So up here, you uh, saying this, this for like 50 minutes. What's happening? 50 right? like five zero. We'll five zero. There you go. Oh. Here's what we're looking at. Now I trust you. Guys. I don't have a smartphone, believe it or not. No, that's probably not. Right. Anybody wants to play with this thing? Feel free. Anybody want to try? You want to knock yourselves out? But there you go. So this is kind of what we're dealing with a lot with with the engines. Now Kenton's engine is 55. We might have to go back in, right? We might all just charge in. Yeah, How are they going to be when we all just charge in a look at 65? How's yeah. that going to go over? Yeah, there should be headroom in there, right? We have, like, everything's out on the leaves, right? Um, so this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. It's thin sheets. There's bad stables. I'll we'll do stables real quick. So everything... You guys, I guess some of you guys know what a stable just happened. If you don't know what a stable is, let me know. These hold it all together. You're stable, right? So you've got an outer sheet, an inner sheet. Water all around it, and then the stay bolts are the these threaded rods that are holding that outer sheet and inner so sheet together. They go together. in there, that's right in here. But they <coughs> crack and they do break. And then there's no rules about them having telltale holes and blah blah blah. So you got to check all the stay bolts. You got to check all the braces. You got to check all the like the mud ring usually has grooving around it. You have to check to make sure that's right. You have to check the corner. So. It is a boiler. It's a pressure vessel. I'm going to go to you, Jesse, if you do this. Oh, we're good. I'm going to give you a moment. So it's a pressure vessel. Again, I'm a boiler guy. This is the kind of stuff I'm dealing with. And then there's a guy that does the numbers on all the pressure vessels. So the thing can actually blow up. So you don't want to really want to do that. You're generating steam, and that's where your energy is coming from. And again, here we are with a steam locomotive. We have a guy that actually does the numbers. So when he goes back in and sees, I give him those numbers like Chase gave me for my sheets, I give it to Jesse. And then he does theoretically the whole boiler, all the stresses and all the things that need to be done. Show him some of the computations, all the stuff you do. This is Jesse Dorn. He is, How you doing? He's, a, he's our, our young boy that's gonna help us out with this thing. So I'm just the boiler guy. If, if you want to try to keep it, and Tom is pretty much going to probably be the running gear guy or whoever we can drag in. Because you have nothing to do, right? You can come up with the office. <laughs> and, um, and this is our guy that has to talk to the FRA and tell them that here, on paper, our locomotive is going to work. Go. So I'll give you a couple. I don't know. Most of you are probably familiar with the engine, so I'll start with the engine we're working on. So we're working on the 65, the 060 tank engine we have here. So. I threw just a couple notes down here. 
we had a couple things going for us right off the bat when we picked this engine for the restoration. Right now, so I recommend, I, I got a couple copies if anybody wants to dig through it here. CFR 230 is the governing body for steam locomotive, the FRA governing body. So in here, it's got all the different things you're supposed to do. It spells out, it tells you pretty much what you need to do. Daily inspection, 31 day inspection, annual inspection, and then 1472, which pretty much encompasses all that, plus all the information that Chell started talking about, the full boiler survey. So. A lot of what they give in you give you in there is minimums. They don't tell you the maximum, they give you minimums, and then they say on top of that, safe and suitable for service. We're not gonna rebuild this, that thing the same way that the T1's gonna get rebuilt, 765, any of these mainline engines are gonna be rebuilt because it's not necessary. We're gonna rebuild it to a safe and suitable situation, and we're gonna be above all the minimums that are called out there. So. Again, going back to this engine, when Porter built this engine, we have the spec sheets for it. We have some of the prints for it. I should have brought some down again. Towards the end, we anybody wants to hang around, we can talk a little deeper. I can bring out, we were lucky enough to obtain some of the prints. Some of the prints for Porter locomotives have been kept in a couple different um, museums. The one in Canada, the Science and Technology Museum in Canada, has a lot of the Porter prints. We were able to get an elevation drawing and then a full boiler drawing for 65. 65 was built to a five to one factor of safety. The federal regulations say everything needs to be a four to one factor of safety. So she's been run for a long time. Yes, sir. Yes. What's that mean? So factor of safety is when you're running these, these uh, the numbers on the engine, there's basically if it's set to 100 PSI, it needs to be able to run to 400 PSI before there's any type of failure or stresses or anything like that. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So, um, so it was run to a 5 to 1. We knew it's been run hard and not maintained well for a very long time. It's been maintained to the status it needed to be. Um, as most locomotives were, all the way up until 2000. I'm sure a lot of you guys have probably heard about the Gettysburg incident in the 90s. That is kind of what brought on... Set everything in Exactly. Set everything in motion. Then it wasn't anymore just operators, whatever they were comfortable with running. It was now a federal regulated... Here is a book of, again, minimums. They are minimums for you guys to follow, but here is a book of minimums that you guys need to comply to. And that was... They brought in a bunch of different people from a bunch of different tourist railroads. They brought people in from uh, your, your Cumbres and Toltec, the general managers from, from there, and Durango. People who are running every day, six days a week, three quarters of the year. They brought in uh, Lynn Modinger and people from Strasburg. And they handpicked people from, from just your weekend railroaders to people who are running steam majority of the year. And that's kind of how they came apart, came about with, with these minimums. So, um, like Shell said, what we do is we, we kind of pick the engine, and then you got to strip it. You need to, every 1,472 days, which ends up being 15 years, you need to do a full boiler survey, or if you're taking a locomotive out of retirement like we were with this, with uh, 65. So, everything needs to be stripped. In our case, tank comes off, the, uh, the jacketing comes off, all the insulation comes off. Everything comes off of the locomotive, so then that way it's a clean boiler and you can go through and start measuring. Um, usually, in that, you also need to be able to get full inspection inside. So, removing, assuming your tubes, if you wanted to save your tubes, you can save some of your tubes and flues, as long as you can still get in and get full measurements inside your boiler. Most people just take them all out, so that way they have full area to work and, and access everything. Then we start going through and taking measurements and then you start running calculations so on the back here i gave you a couple different two different scenarios of calculations um what i've done again I, i've been lucky this locomotive doesn't have a lot of documentation but we were able to find a print for the locomotive's boiler we were able to find um the national board paperwork the the boiler was um was certified through the national board, so we had that paperwork. 
all that is helpful in filling out the form four, but you still need to verify everything that's in there and get every measurement. And basically you're looking for a failure point on the locomotive. So you're checking every different area. You can, as long as things are the same in that area, then you can say the side sheets. On our engine, basically the whole width of the side sheet and up about four foot, the spacing of all the bolts is the same. It's a flat sheet. The thickness is the same, so you can go through there and you can pick out the minimum thickness and calculate that whole area and do that as a chunk. And then you need to do the corners, and you need to do the knuckles, and you need to do the dome. And the dome being a big cutout, then the dome has a liner, and I think that's one of the doubts I have in here. Is then you need to calculate that there's a backing liner underneath that dome hole to make sure that there's enough support in there. So it ends up being a lot, a lot of work. Um, Again, you look in here, you'll see some of the crazy formulas. What I'm doing is I'm trying to make it, I'm taking a little extra time on the front end. I've actually taken all these formulas, which again, like Chell said, you won't find a lot of the formulas. You'll find some information in the CFR 230, but most of it allows you the liberties to either use a standard code or the code by which your locomotive was made or a standard practice of the time. So, our locomotive was built in 1930. If I could find the Porter standard code, locomotive code, which I cannot, I could use that one. I can find the Baldwin practice from that age, so I can use the calculations in that code. There is a, and I don't know how to say that fancy word, compilation or something that was put out around the, yeah, one of them, that was put out, yeah, that was put out, Around the same time as the 2.30, they basically, the same people who were in that room kind of working on the 2.30, put together a cheat sheet of all the different calculations in there. But even that's a... Some smart guys. Right, very, some very smart good. guys. Um, but even that, so, so that's a 40-page document. And, and it's pretty well laid out. I might have it in the vehicle. If I do, I can bring it down for you guys to look at. But it, you can go to, okay, dome liner counts, and then you can go down there and find those. What I'm doing is, I'm hoping this isn't my last steam locomotive here or ever to help rebuild. So I'm putting all this stuff in Excel and locking the formulas so then I can go in and just measure, okay, here's the radius, here's the length, here's the thickness, boom, spit out. Am I good or am I bad? How long do you think it's going to take you to do the calculate? I know, right? I'm sorry, dude. He has a family, too, and we're ruining it. Just so you know. <laughs> yeah, I came he has from a new uh, house, yeah. a wife, a family, and then we got him over here like, we don't let him out. You yeah. know? We'll bring him some food. I know you guys are worried about that. But how long is it going to take you to do all of If you saw some of the calculations, your head would spin. I, I did okay in algebra, but oh my god. Yeah. It's and, like, then, and then to try to write them in Excel would be hard. Like, you know, I'm like, all right, square, square root, squared, square root, all right, which parenthesis no. goes here, order of operations, all that fun How long do you think it's going to take for you on paper to tell me that that order is going to be okay? I'll probably have minimum 50 hours into it. Wow, that's not as much as a problem. <laughs> minimum, minimum 50. Double that to 100. Yeah, now that I think about it, yeah. By the time you're done driving over here. Yeah. And well, so, exactly. So that's that's just literally getting everything I need built out in Excel. So what I'm doing, you'll see here. I mean, I've got a tab in the bottom of Excel for everything: side sheets, wrapper, dome, dome liner, dome lid, um, just pretty much everything. Boiler course one, boiler course two. I mean, you got it. You literally need to have every joint, every radius, every part of that boiler in there. So. Um, I'm talking I'll have 50 minimum just in getting all these formulas into a working, non-broken formulas that then I can come up here. And again, I, I'm lucky to have a couple of the prints so I can pull and gather a lot of the, the radii and the diameters and things that I need off the prints. But I still then also need to come up and get a lot of the measurements. Can you tell us, now that you did all that homework, you did all the theoretical stuff, how does that roll with the FRA when they come down here, the federal guys? So the FRA is the Federal Railroad Administration. They're the ones that – and what's weird about it, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, they're not really around the spank. They're not really around when you see us go away. 
Yeah, actually, <laughs> it's true. We're probably a pain in their butt. But they wanted to see that we did our due diligence, if that makes any sense. They're not, they're not really ones that spank us when we do something wrong. They can definitely shut us down. And they want to come here and make sure that when you guys get on the train, we're not going to put the thing up and kill something. So, when, what is the next process? You did all your theoretical stuff. Right. We put water in it. What do they do? Well, we're going to bring Even them in. for me, what do they do? I was going to say, we're going to bring them in for that, because they want they want to understand, and we need to do this somewhat soon, is we need to bounce off our scope of work. So we've done, we did a high-level survey, and as you've seen from um, Chell's sheet example there, even if I did an external survey, there's still other things that are going to crop up. So we did our, we did our main high-level survey. We knew right from the get-go that the whole firebox had to come out of that engine. Which, fireboxes were always made as wear items, and that's where all the heat transfer is. They were made where <clears throat> the firebox was always thinner for heat transfer than the wrapper, the back heads, and everything else. So you would put a couple fireboxes in an engine before the whole boiler was worn out. So, we knew right off the bat that the whole firebox needed to come out of that because it was underneath the minimum thickness is required. So, we've started that. Um, that process, the rear tube sheet and the door sheet are out right now. We've contracted with FMW Solutions. They have flanged, working with Gary Besman and Tennessee Valley using their McCabe flanger, they have flanged our sheets. Right now, I believe our sheets are getting the tube holes cut in them. And then in about two or three weeks, they should be coming back to our shop. Coming and then, home. Coming home. Coming home. No. <laughs> um, the process uh, Chell and Tom and myself kind of elected to do here is instead of ripping everything out, we've left the side sheets because you've got a basically it's, it's not straight, it kind of goes up over and then bends around. And then the rear tube sheet is actually taller than the door sheet, so the crown has a slight slope to it. We've left the crown and the side sheets and everything in. We're going to take those two sheets that were flanged for us, we're going to put them and fit them into the sheets that are already in there and then once they're in and tacked in place then we'll take out the rest of the sheet. Um, so different we're, people we're do it different ways. We're, we're matching, you know this too, we're matching to what is there. Uh, I'm a big fan of empirical, doing stuff empirically not theoretically because if you lay it out on a piece of paper and then people actually do it. <laughs> I've done it too many times. Or I drilled stable holes in a sheet like this. You know, figured it out, completely wrong, and I'm just staring at it, and you know, you don't really, this, this is actually boiler steel, the special materials we use, you don't want to mess this stuff up. So what we're doing with the 65, and actually, I I don't know, I think we might be able to sleep in there, I don't know, if the powers that be will let us or not. But in the 65, what we're trying to do is we're trying to match, we're taking the, the, the door sheet out where you throw the coal, uh, the firebox, and then the tube sheet out, we're going to match what the guys were ordered it, because I think I have a feeling they knew more than I do. So we're going back in and just going to match brainless, foolproof, just match. We're going to transfer the holes over from their outside sheet into the, what we put in. We just match it and transfer it. Yes, you there in the back. Do you have a jig to do that? A jig to for the holes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. to, to transfer them from the outside from the to the outside. Inside. Yeah. inside. Okay. We have some different little things we screw in, and then it... It projects the hole into the inside sheet. It's kind of neat. Kind of neat. That's a, I I that's a Bill Frederickson moment. <laughs> He's going to make you mad. But do you have more? I'm <clears throat> sure I do. But, okay, so you were asking next step. So yes. um, those sheets will be coming back. We've developed our scope of work. Now that we've had the boiler opened up, we've seen some other I items that we want to work on. So our next step is to bring the FRA in here, invite them in and then say, look, here is our scope of work. Here's what we've seen. Here's what we're doing. Here's what we're doing. Here's, we're, we're not doing this. We're not doing that. And why? And then have that open discussion with them. I've been told, I have not done this before with them. I've been told that they are reserved in what they will say because they don't want to take any liability on themselves. Yes. So. T typical um, federal agency. Exactly. <laughs> yes. exactly. Wrong. Um, yeah. Exactly. So. Um, but my biggest thing is I want to have I want to have a good relationship with them and good open relationship with them because they are a governing body and they can they they you know, life can be life miserable or or, they, you, or you can have a, exactly yep. exactly so basically we put it back together then and blow the whistle no we have to hide <laughs> first.
That's true. You have to hydro first. That's so true. Question, question. I don't know where we are on time. I don't know. 521. Talk about taking out the insulation. Yeah. A lot of the insulation that was used back in the day was fairly nasty stuff. Yeah. It was asbestos. Right. No. Was it asbestos that you had to remove from here? I don't believe it was. Okay. It did not appear to be Okay. Asbestos. And when you put insulation back in, it'll be something. It'll be asbestos. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to come by, but I mean, it's a great, great you know, insulator. Asbestos is great. It yeah. is a wonderful it's insulator. Great. It does not wick moisture. Don't and hold it. moisture, so no, it, it, it is a one. But it is, um, I mean, Except obviously it has the, the asbestosis. Guys, I don't know if anybody issues. ever saw the pictures. Yes, didn't they mine asbestos? Did yes. they mine yes. stuff? Yes. Yes. They're yeah. in the truck driving this stuff down on dirt, dusty roads, and they're smoky. Uh, and I'm thinking, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm thinking, man, I'm sorry. Tell your wife I'm sorry. Tell your kids. I'm sorry. <laughs> Valley Forge, isn't there? Wasn't there a, a Valley Forge mine in Valley yes. Forge Dye Park? Forge. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so there you go. One of there your was, national some... treasures. It's this beautiful park. I believe park, one the corner of it. For the guest, the, the guest center. What's that? The parking yeah. lot. We will be there. There's a quarry in there. Well, there's, and there's, yeah. well, there's any of the stuff we do. Yeah, you're going to tell us. There's a lot of options. Where do you go? There's a pipe that's probably just in bag, but the wool, wool light. They haven't got it. We use we use the they haven't figured out it's bad for you. Yeah. Yeah, it comes in the same block or more like I Go use. Ahead. Another question. Yeah. You often see a grid marked out on the outside of, yep. of a boiler. And yeah, there, in fact, there's a grid. Yep. You, you have to take measurements as on the, the cross pieces of the grid? Or? Correct. Yep. Okay. So and um, it used to be a 12 by 12 was the, again, a lot of minimum requirements. Um, now what I've been told is the FRA wants to see minimum 12 by 12, prefer 6 by 6 grids on the barrel, and then they want stable spacing on any of the state areas. Which changed. So, what's that? Which changed. Which changed. It used to just be 12 by 12, and then it was 6 by 6. Yep. It's the same thing. Same thing we're doing here. So, But again, it, it's something where we'll use our thickness thing just like that, and yep. then we'll write the number right in that grid. Like but you also need to use your eye because um, don't see it on this one too much because it's an outer sheet. But a lot of times, especially on the inner sheet, you'll get cinder cutting around the bolts. So then technically you could run your grid, put a dot right in the middle. Looks good. But you got to use your brain a little bit too. Yeah. We're, we're saying, oh, you know what? Let, like me, let me try to see if there's a visual low spot there. Let me get it. Um, a lot of times people see, kind of like I ground this one out here, this sheet. A lot of people will on a side sheet because if it's not for the wastage from not washing the boiler well like this one was, there's also that lower area of the mud ring is just where all your sediment swirls. There's a lot of swirling that goes on down there. You'll see a lot of people will just grind a big long line down through there and just measure the whole thing all the way down through before they get into it to figure out what they have and what needs to be done. So I, I don't know. I don't know if we can go. Time to pull the trigger. Take, take them over to cover. Ask, could you run up and ask Mom if he walks some of these guys? Anybody be interested in 355? I got it. Yeah. 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 Could you Rob ask complacently <laughs> and dogs or something? Dutchman, <laughs> <laughs> shoot fly pie. There you go. Yes. <laughs> so, you heard from him. Which is insane. And yeah, as you can see, I, I actually run bolts and do all that stuff, but that's way out of my league. So there's another guy you need. Let me talk about some things you need if you're going to put your steam motor fast together. Here we go. You need, basically, and you can see some of these tools. I, I did want to bring something for you guys so you can see. You need a bunch of guys that have some specific talents. Boiler guy, machinist, 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 and old school machinist. Because I know all y'all kids at CNN, CNC. Yeah, CNC. <laughs> the guys I always work with are always got their hand on the lathe, which you're not supposed to do. They're feeling their cut. They're looking. They're old. They're decrepit. You're and they do it off my hand. Yeah. And they do these <laughs> one one pass thing. Like we need. You know, a specific size bolt. So they'll make a specific size bolt for us because it's not like you can't go to Lowe's and just buy any of this stuff. You know, it's it's all different handmade stuff. So basically, you're looking at a machine that has 
Yeah. <laughs> Sad thing is, there's actually yeah, contractors well, out there that, 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 that yeah. do subpar well, stuff. When you're looking at parts that are all machined by hand, if you need, um, I know the Reading North because I worked over there. They actually made a blowdown. What a blowdown is, he blows the sediment out. You do that in the morning. You see the trains do that all the time. See, look, most guy made the new blowdown valve. Made the made because you can't go and buy them anymore. They don't see them. So. That was probably a month of this time, maybe a month and a half. And then we had a terrible time trying to get him up to me. Not the bow part, the part he made, against the boiler. We couldn't figure it out. So now we're in there laughing at the seas and, oh my lord, it's just crazy, it's crazy. So you need a machine, you need him, the guy that's going to do the numbers, you need me like a boiler guy. And a lot of this stuff is grunt work, it's stupid, but then there's subtleties in there, like if you're trying to... If you're, and then some of this stuff we have to deal with the code, we have to find out with the code, like what we're supposed to be doing to repair stuff. But there's subtlety. Like when you're doing something, like we were talking about laying sheets out, and you're gonna, my friend is going to talk about that too. Empirically, I like laying this stuff out because they kind of sometimes would move the stable in just a little bit, get the toes of corn. And you're saying these are supposed to be four inch centers. Like, Jesse writes that on the paper, it doesn't matter, it's all important. You get on the floor, my oh, if you get in the Ford Alco, and the guy decided to scoot them over a little bit. And you're like, uh, but I put my whole gear. That's what this is what the print said. Well, I know, right? The guy took some liberties on the shop floor. Can't always go right in print. Nope. So, steal the machine. The tools. The tools. Who has these anymore? Who wants these anymore? Yeah, this, well, I'm going to go through it. Yeah, right? Are we allowed to or not? We're not allowed. Why are not going to get so many oh, nines? Well, right. well, Remember your lawyer? Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, the volunteers are coming. Nobody else is not. So, right. Or whatever goes on. These are the staples we talked about. You guys know the difference between a flexible bowl and a. Anybody want to see it? Or I'm going to see it in the yeah. Different types of staples. These are rigid. Flexible bowl. It has a head on the top. These were designed later in the air because what happens when it's warm, it warms up. Yeah. Actually, we can uh, uh, separate it. all that, but that is. Uh, Moving in and out. Yeah. 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 I mean, not the way it's going to go. Yeah. Oh. That's what I'm saying. I mean, machine this with threads on it, and threads it in a sheet. I want to screw it up again. Again, under bucks. Yeah, really. Lots and lots and lots of money. And then you drive those in. This is an air motor. That one is stable half. So when you tap the thing, you sheet, just as you were saying, the inside, the outside sheet, when you take long taps, you run through both of them. To get right. through that? Yeah. Over there's a rivet hammer if you guys want to see what a rivet hammer is. Feel free to pick the stuff up, just don't hurt yourself. You can get a feel for, for how heavy some of the stuff is. Where is where is my friend? Holy cow. Yeah. That's what you That's use when you go to rhythm. Right. When you're riveting. It weighs as much as your locomotive, Bob. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we have chipping hammers for dressing sheets, chipping off stuff. Young man's job. There There's a go. wrench we use. Yeah. That is a wrench we use. Feel free to grab Friends. that too. But well, you say that, I mean. Say young man's job. How many young men are you working with? <laughs> you're not, right? We were talking about this morning. Right? You're not. At the end of this whole little thing, I was going to talk about that a little bit. Sadly. And I was going to say, again, if something's running, enjoy it. Um, air motors turn things, but they kill you. So they get stuck, and then you go and spinning around with the other time. But yeah, this is it. This actually is a tube, tube roller, if you know what that is. And this is a piece out of the challenge, believe it or not. Yeah, they, I was out in Illinois, and they use different types of stable or uh, flu size. And so hopefully I'll go back and roll the in that thing. And that's a piece, that's an old piece that came out that gave me my size I need to pick on new tube roller. But these guys run this, or bigger ones run this. And all this stuff, the tools are hard to find. That's one thing that's hard to find. Guys who run it. Another thing that's hard to find. Machines. If they're trying to find anything bigger than five, they don't even make anything brand stuff. new anymore. Than oh, not five. even close. You know, we were just checking for the 142 because they have metric. A nightmare. A five, nightmare. Five and a half inch. We went to Poland. Yeah, yeah you Poland. can't get them. Wilson or nobody has them. 
That's another thing. Materials for these stupid, these wonderful steamers. <laughs> Getting the boilerplate. Getting the boilerplate. Now, speed of the Challenger, they have to get a specific size boilerplate. They're doing all kinds of work on the inside. It's a weird, weird, weird size. I think it's like, I'm going to say 7 sixteenths boilerplate. So what happens is there's common sizes, half, three eighths, and stuff like that. Why don't you just cheat up to a half? It's because when you put one inch firebox in your locomotive thinking it's going to last longer, and you're looking at me like I'm crazy, there's a heat transfer issue there. And there's also a pushing issue there. So, and this is Mike Manwheeler, believe it or not, he's big on this. You're putting one inch plate instead of three inch plate, you think it's going to last longer. All that steel is pushing when it warms up. You're getting that much more, more cross-section growth. steel when it grows. Yes. So now, where the parts oh, in the boiler that are the parts of the boiler that flex and are nasty and usually crack and get now you're pushing that much more. So the guys that design these bad boys, they, they what did they start doing steam locomotives? You guys know what 18, 18 20, 30s, 30s. By the time they got to the 1900s, trust me, I go back to whatever they had. And and we always say this, they go, oh it's not rocket science, you know, it's just stupid steam locomotives. Those guys had it home. They had it home pretty good. So if you see 3 8 plate in your firebox, you probably have to go back to 3 8 plate. That's because they made all the mistakes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, the guy's yeah. got, right? you know, whoever got killed yeah. or whatever yeah. mistake yeah. they did. Well, I can do that again. Yeah. Let's do with that. No. No. And so I'm, and you know, everybody, I work at a lot of different places, but I'm telling you, I just go back, to, like empirically laying shit out like you said. I go back to what was there, man. I go back to what was there. I try to make it right and go back. But finding the plate, finding the materials, finding these clues, the certain sizes, what, what, what Mike is saying. Oh, I don't know, there's a guy who's running this program, the challenging program. He can get his hands on this flue material, but you can't just go to Lowe's and get pipe. It's a specific, as my friend over here will tell me, it's a specific code of what I need to put in my locomotive. You know, designed for boiler, designed for boiler use. So fi- finding that, thank God I don't have hair. It's so nice. Um, <laughs> no, it's just as pleasant getting rained on. I mean, it's kind of cool. So here we are together in the field getting rained on. Nice. Yeah. So finding like the different sizes, five and a half. I have certain locomotives use different size boiler tubes. This is five and a half and two inches. This is, this guy uses what is it? Three and a half, four inch. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, three and a half and, and two and a quarter. Just finding that stuff. So that's one of the big issues too. More issues, especially like tools, material, parts, code availability, time and facility. A place to do this, right? For me, outside <laughs> of rain, right? In the mud. <laughs> Tell us, tell us about working yeah, in the <laughs> snow underneath a locomotive. Tell us about that. Oh, tell us about it. I started when I was 10 years old. Yeah. Overhead crane. Oh, yeah. Ah, nice I have all that. The steam <laughs> dome on some of these things. So there's steam where the steam goes up. They collect at the highest point in the boiler steam dome. Yeah, you got to take those off and fall in. And you're on a curved surface. So you got three guys up there. Not that you'd ever want to jump or fall off an engine. Yeah. Like Jesse Gorn. Crawling up there, moving All these studs crazy. sticking up and things that trip over. I know. Your fingers in the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the other thing is 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 cost and time, money, money, money. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> money to put our Ford locomotive back together again. Please, Unicef. Please, please. <laughs> the one thing I thought All was All I need is flies in my eyes. You ever notice that in the commercials they got the flies in the eyes? What, why? <laughs> don't, show us, don't show us that. And don't show us the fly in the eyes. You know what I mean? <laughs> you guys are feel free to help it. It's a five program. Put your engine outside of the chain in the middle of winter. Like right? The yeah. SPCA yeah. commercial. Yeah. So yeah, let, me, let, me, <laughs> let me wrap a little bit because we're just going to get rained on. I'm going to wrap up here a little bit. So we rebuilt the damn thing. We finally get together. Everybody's excited. <laughs> then the next thing we have to worry about, and of course I'm just going over the ones here. You have a boiler time quickly. You have a time on your boiler, but the running gear doesn't. So a lot of times the guys will either try to co 
like to get the running gear ready to go or they'll wait with certain things with running gear till later. You know, I mean, you, it's an engine management thing. Like, say we get the boiler, we get the thing running, finally we can get to go up and down the railroad. Yeah. Figure out your next... Yeah, there's always something to pack. Pack. But, oh, yeah. then we get the guys that need to run these things. This is that actually my lead. This is Tom Hartman, actually, who is talking right now. <laughs> right. Getting a crew of guys. Now, I don't know a lot. I don't know a lot at all. In fact, if you tell me where the spots on at 65 I have to lubricate before I go out in the morning. <laughs> there, I guess. <laughs> right? <laughs> There's a specific number. How many is on 65? Would you know? Not anymore, but... T1 is insane. Yeah. There's a chart. Yeah. And it's not all just one goo. You got to put the red oh, goo that's here. That's yeah. You got the steam goo over here. You got the oh yeah, oh yeah, grease under the cellars. Guys, that can run these things, right? There you are. And you probably know more than what I'm saying than what I am saying. Not at all. <laughs> Guys, get in here what the night before, the day before, to fire these bad boys up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, less time the better. They don't want to rush that. Yep. Because or else you'll be back on it, rebuilding it again. Yeah. You don't. You don't hear the sheets scream. Like yeah. Start screaming in pain. You're gonna hire me again. Go fix that. Yeah. What are yeah. the uh, the T one? They're what Thursday afternoon. Yeah. So T one. To run it on Saturday. That, guys know who that is. Yep. I will wrap this up so we can get out of the rain. The T one four eight four monster thing it is, and the thing is, if you put a fire in it, you can actually walk up to the front of the engine and go. So you have a fire. Basically, the heat takes so long to go from that back end where they're shoveling coal and going crazy to go to the barrel. You're like, you actually have a fire. So it starts Wednesday night. And what are those torpedo heaters? Yep. Mm -hmm. The torpedo heater goes in Wednesday night. Next morning, they refill it with torpedo heat. So it's Thursday morning, torpedo heat. When they go home, torpedo heat. So all they're trying to do is just trying to get out filled with water. Please the water keep water in your engine, yeah. please, please. Yeah. <laughs> Light the fire. So they're running on Saturday. We light the fire Friday morning. So they had two days of torpedo heater Friday morning, and it'll just start with wood. You, see, you know this more than I do. Like, like wood, a mm -hmm. little bit of stuff, you know, leftover napkins, just a nice little campfire to start in the morning. <laughs> and by the time they got done that Friday, they want to have some coal burning, they'll bank it. So then someone will come in like 3 or 4 in the morning. Now they should have some pressure. By the end of Friday, they just start seeing it lift off the, the gate. But then, Friday morning, someone will come around 3 or 4. Start getting, get that, you know what a blower is. It creates an artificial draft. You guys know more than I do. Um, it creates an artificial draft. So they'll crack the blower. And they'll just start pulling the fire just a little bit and start getting some coal and fire, you know. And then they'll start to, the stoker will happen about 7. If they're out by like 8 or whatever it is. So about an hour before they roll, then they'll the stoker and they should have full pressure and all that stuff. And that whole time, they're what we were talking about, lubricating Tapping on stuff while that's loose, go get a wrench. We have to tighten this up. Oh, it's a, it's crazy. It's crazy. You guys again know this. Every time a locomotive goes out, let me conclude. Let me conclude. If guys, any more questions? 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 So I guess on that heat up, a couple things. There, there's some methodical reasons for doing that. So um, a service day is constituted as pressure and fire so there's reasons that they're bringing that thing up slowly they're allowed to preheat they're actually encouraged to preheat but they don't want to use service days by putting fire in it ahead of time so that they can have fire torpedo you could do it you can burn a little campfire in there for a couple days it's just a little dirtier so how many you get no 1472 so right it has to be a fire and pressure correct that's so what, what happens is if you're running days. a steam locomotive to get the most out of that rebuild that you're hiring some idiot to do for you, you charge way too much. You don't want you want to get as much time out of that boiler rebuild as you can. So that's what that 1472. And that's what the engineering standards committee came up with. He was talking about the old the old hats that came together after Gettysburg blew up and came up with the rules. But that's basically 15 years every weekend. Am I wrong with that? Yeah, basically. It's basically you get a, a weekend for 15 years. I mm -hmm. think. Something like it's that. It's very like, close to that. Yeah, yes. something like that. Any other one that the, the other high level thing you'll hear people talk Which about? Which lets me is into pound the... per hour when they're bringing it up. 
once they start switching over and start building pressure, you try to try not to build any faster than one pound or one pound per minute. Right. No. One pound per minute. No, no I have not by half of that. No. Yeah. Concluding. Go ahead. You're there in the No, back. no. I'm just oh, out Watch out again. Yeah, another suit. Yeah. Oh, I'll sue them. I'm going to hold that railroad. Yeah. yeah. So here I go. You inherit the steam After... locomotive rebuilding program. That's what you get. Yeah, no, right. you, get, wanna... you get a lot of debt and you have to drive down to Tennessee to go get the. <laughs> so, to conclude on all this, and this is just a glimmer, and it's nice you guys hung around. Thank you for hanging around because it could get incredibly boring. You're okay yeah, still, huh? Wrong. Yeah, okay. You didn't go for jewelry either. Nah. <laughs> oh, wonderful winning you are. <laughs> So, to conclude, when you guys see a steam locomotive go by, and this is just scratching the surface, because we run an incredible amount of problems, and you know, it's very special. It is very, very, very special. You can't just throw a match in the thing, which people have done, I know most of these hit. But people throw matches and just go, no, it's not like that at all. There's a whole network of things that have to come together. So. Hopefully, Kempton's going to be together in three more years, something like that, three, four, five years. 65th anniversary, 65. You see in that. But if you guys support this stuff, and and you should try to go see it while it's still here, like the 4449, I went out there when I was on the same track today. And they had a big plan of all the trips they're going to do. I think that was one of the last ones. Other than that, they did a couple Christmas trips. They 261. An amazing <laughs> engine. Yeah. I, I talked to Sandberg. I've seen it in the Amazing. Some of these guys are playing. Daylight and the, and the Freedom Train. Sandberg and Franz and these guys have been in this industry forever. I go, hey, Steve, when are you going to like that engine? No, I'm, I'm a fan. As you can tell, I'm a fan. I want to see the thing run. Um, Well, we think maybe Christmas, maybe they're going to try to tie into that. Canadian Pacific thing, maybe they can loop on. Like, you guys see steam locomotives. Take it for granted. Do not for take that. it for granted. Honestly. Like, chase them down, go and enjoy it because it's. I don't know how much it's going to keep going. We were talking earlier about kids coming up and doing it. And what's weird about it, our generation, I don't know if you're. Did your generation. You didn't see steam for real. Yeah. You saw well, I mean, steel? I, I caught the end of. Oh. What was going on? You still had CP. Anybody ever see this? Yes! But, sir! Yep. You yeah. saw it around here. Real. <clears throat> Pennsylvania Railroad to Soldiers Point. From yeah. VA to yeah. <laughs> Loading freighters to Toronto. Oh, cool. Man. Yeah. Cool. A huge trestle up there that burnt in 71, unfortunately. But yeah. Yeah, a huge Pennsylvania Railroad. You can't. Yard. It's, it's no oh, yeah. more. I hate to be like this. And I know this is seeming yeah. gloom. It's no more. And it's weird that this generation, I guess I'm going to, you're you pretty young, yeah, yeah. that we actually like steam locomotives. So I guess there's some like overlap, but I'm not seeing. Well, that's another thing is trying to get the younger generation it's, I don't, I don't into know. Do it, learning. I don't see it. It's not, well, I mean, I I'm fortunate it. my son is involved. Yeah, you have that. But you see the young people want to come out and take pictures, which is all great, but we're, the nuts and bolts. Oh, no. 57. Yeah. Yeah, the nuts and bolts. We're bolt. getting old and tired, and I'd like to see this stuff passed on to younger generation. Again, there's a few here and there. happen, and I go see it. But, you know, when, when our, when our generation is gone, I see it. Yeah, that's, yeah, no. Take the extra day off from work. That's your own money. Go ahead. We live here in Pennsylvania. If you go off, say a three-hour race around Kansas, pretty great. <laughs> we it's are the Colorado great. of the oh, East. Yeah. We are absolutely. Yeah. But there's what? I, I bet you there's fifteen or sixteen operating cast. steam locomotives. You guys haven't yeah, gone to Cass. Go to Cass. Yeah. Yeah. This is great. Ah. Yeah. You know, and you drive, you yeah, brought out to the five-hour yeah. radius, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. East Broadtop is mostly. A friend wrote on East Broadtop and said that it's short, but I'm sure it's going to get longer. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And and my friends, we beat them up, but ready the northern. You guys are not going to see a steam locomotive without a diesel behind it running at mainline speed. You're not, except there's this one place. <laughs> just so you know, just so you know. And I'm not, I work with so many different roads, and, and Annie's crazy. He's literally crazy. I enjoy the guy, but he's crazy. But <laughs> RBMM, reason being, Muller's nuts. <laughs> yeah, he's Muller's nuts. 
And um, and he doesn't. Know, I worked there for seven years. He does not know my name. <laughs> no idea who I was. Right? I'm the foreigner. He thinks I'm the foreigner. That's some really funny story. Really story. Yeah, go see that northern go by. Even better, buy a ticket. Like my friend who takes pictures a lot of times and supports the railroad will buy the ticket. But then he'll go take the pictures. You know? And here, 65 coming back. I would love to see everybody like you guys, the, the, the serious devotees. Be able to get a cab ride or something like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. When 65 comes back. That's the plan. I mean, there's uh, you talk to a lot of people. Mike can attest this. A lot of people. There's a lot of older generation who actually started here at Kempton on I did. 65. I did. I did. Went out to other railroads, big railroads, small railroads, tourist railroads, all I around. did. I did. I did. Um, pretty much every one of the engine crew on the T1 out of <laughs> Reading and Northern. I mean, we got other. We got Rob here raising his hand and. A lot of people have come through here. I mean, it was a great. And everybody always knocked it for just a small little tank engine, but it was a great railroad for it's learning. Neat because like this whole, I don't know if you guys did the steam town thing, yeah. where you, you're not allowed in the yard and don't touch this and make sure you wear your mask and all. That. I'm not saying I'm, you should wear masks anymore, but I got caught out in the yard one time <laughs> by an official. That was ridiculous. Like, here's this rusty locomotive, right? That, you know, it's just basically rusty to nothing. And I'm just looking at it. He's got the lights on. <laughs> Stop what you're doing! You know, like, I was, you know, freeze! So I just hear Kenton, man, come on down. Come on down. Come on up in the cab. Come, you know, come and see it. Although, liability, we can't look that thing. That's yeah, so sad. Yeah. But maybe you guys can sneak over there at some point later on when there's less people or something. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, 142. Don't forget 142 out of there in New Jersey. Uh, possibly next year. My guess is probably next year, yeah. Tubes and flues are in it. I know yeah. the guy who did them. He, <laughs> <laughs> he overrolled one of them, but that's not talking about. got a lot of projects under it. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh no. It's not just the steam engine. Track extension. No, but the other thing, you know, some of like these that. shops have three, four guys working. They got the cars to work with. I, I'll tell one funny story, then I'll go away. Mike, Wayne, Dave Conrad, you know who Dave Conrad is. Dave Conrad is a guy at the top of all these shops called the CMO, right? He's the chief mechanical officer, I guess. Yeah. That's right. He is the guy. He gets to do everything. He's the one that tells everybody what to do, right? So Dave Conrad, I'm up there at Valley, and I was young. Young and dumb. Young and dumb. Now I'm old and dumb. <laughs> he... I know that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I put it somewhere. I know I did. Um, I go to Dave Conrad, chief mechanical officer, head man, head dude. I said, now that you're chief mechanical officer, as you know, we love working on these You get to work on some men all the time, don't you? Right, exactly. The little head's going, no. He goes back and never gets to work on him. I never get to work on him. He goes out and he starts fixing the toilet with one of the passengers. <laughs> <laughs> with the blue. And the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. I got to work on the steam logo. He goes, I'm going to let you work on the steam logo. I'm going to go fix the toilet. <laughs> Three guys in the shop. Four guys in the shop. You know, and that's what you know when you think about it. That's what people see. Except when they're taking it upon themselves to do things. <laughs> you guys are going to fill us in later about our, our pre-show, pre aren't you? Yeah. So, but just to let you know, and I'm going to wrap it up with that. Thank you, Jesse Dorn. Right. Thank you, Tom Hardman, who's a lot of help. i got to say, he's the best. There's Tom. Tom, how did you get out of this? <laughs> Remember, you were just talking about the blue view and what he's got. Yeah, speaking of out of you, I'm working on the toilet. Yeah. Damn, not <laughs> Go and support the team, enjoy it. And you'll see a lot of guys that are in it, guys that do it. We're more than happy to have you come up and, you know, when there's not a throng of people. Like, if, if you go to a Ray Norton thing, there's literally a thousand guys taking a picture. You're not going to fucking take But any of those guys in the cab, Shane, uh, Ryan, any of these guys, you, Mike, they all love this shit. So if you come up there and say, man, what are you doing? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, whoever Chaz or <laughs> Chase, I'm, I'm, you can, you can, you can come up and you know, come in the firebox. You know, play like Kevin and stuff like that. And like support, pizza too. support. Yeah, hey, bring him a pizza. There you go. Bring your pizza. That's that's, that's the Carl C. So thank you. More yeah. questions? Yeah, Anybody maybe else? Got questions? Want to see anything? I'm not. What, what's the, the tube roll all about? So you take your tubes out of the. There's two tubes you can see in the 
and that's a five tube boiler. You put fire coal in the fire box. And the way the smoke and the fire, it goes. You have a picture for us? Uh, I think it goes one from the, back end of the, the fire box sideways, which is an incredibly inefficient design. <laughs> like if you see any stationary boiler that they make electricity out of, fire yeah. goes up, right? Yeah. There's this tube? Yeah, this is the tube. So we take the fire, have it go sideways out the smokestack. The way it happens is, and I'll make it fast, there's a draft. The cylinders exhaust out the smokestack, venture in fact they pull on the fire, draft it up. So what you do to do your inspection, like we were talking about in your boiler, to see if your boiler's okay, you pull all these fumes out, get them out of the tube sheet. Now what happens is with the new ones, they just fit in the holes like that. You can actually turn them in the holes. So what to do to set these in those things, we expand the actual flue. And that's what this does. If you look at this, it's pretty, it's pretty neat. It's actually pretty neat. So you see now, we're going to have an air motor like that. This thing's going to be turning. And you see there's a taper on it. You see it's going to start pushing on those. Yeah. Pushing these bad boys out. And it will actually expand that in. You'll get a steam tight joint. Water steam yeah, type joint. As they're doing that, the whole thing is spinning. Right, this whole thing's spinning so the, yeah. the dams are coming out and it's going around. But what he's okay. saying is the material's braided specifically to stretch like that. To yep. To yep. That's why we have to get boiler steel and right. boiler tube okay. steel. steel. And then it has to be annealed too. Like if someone was messing with it, sometimes we have to get it red hot and anneal it or normalize it. So it'll do that. But that's rolling out your flues. If you hear anybody here saying rolling out flues, I'm home rolling flues. That's what it is. We do that on both sides. There's literally five or six different ways to finish flues and tubes. But, you know, depending on what shop you work for and what kind of CMO guy <laughs> wants to do. But that's that's the state, you know, that's a basic way of getting them in. Like the UP does a specific thing. Are you guys uh, beveled your holes when you took your yep. tubes out. Yep, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing who does different things, but Lower ring that yep. creates the That's your draft. Yep. Mm -hmm. Your artificial. Any other questions? You spoke about we we specifically chose 65 because it was yes. the best of the many locomotives that we right. could have chosen from. Yes. The other ones being number two yep. and the, uh, Prairie. the Prairie out here. Okay. Yes. Yep. Those are the other. Those were the only other options on the table. Okay. Um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. So, at the end of the day, two probably would have been cheaper, just being a little bit smaller, but it's it's good for the summer trips, and, and you'll see pictures of it. I mean, it, it pulled this whole contest. You'll, consist, you'll see pictures of it in the 60s doing that, but it's a little bit undersized for our needs here. So, kind of weighing all the factors, 65 became the best choice. Does two, do you think two might have a future? I do. Do. I don't see if it's if it's if it's, it's going to stay here. I think it'd be good to have a two rotation steam program because these things do have to go down every five years. Mm -hmm. For ten, every fifteen years is the big tear down, but every five years you need to tear it down. There's things you can do to mitigate that. Uh, we talked about a little bit the the tubes or the the bolt and the flexies. Do all your stables. There's no reason to tear exactly so down unless you have an issue. Mm -hmm. Right. So these flexible bolts, and we have a I forget I haven't spelled out there a hundred and close to two hundred of them on there. Historically, people did not drill these all the way. You you really only need to drill them just inside the sheet that it's attached to. In that case, what you would have to do every five years is you'd have to strip everything, your jacket, take, all the, take the cab off if you needed to. Some people could do it without. And then you need to come in here and try to turn this to verify your bolt's not broken. Now, what a lot of people are starting to do to save themselves on maintenance, because there's not a lot of people, is you can drill this bolt into the head, Just a third of the way into the head. You drill the bolt into here. Now what you do every 50, every five years is you take those bolts and you need to have good documentation. You need to know what that length is and then you can go in, clean them out, and then you actually probe them with a little electrode probe and you go I in. Have one. <laughs> and that's an actual and the actual flannery probe! <laughs> so then you can go in and probe them and verify that they're clean and not broken. And wow. as long as you, the reason you're verifying they're clean, because if they're clean, 
if they did break, then they would leak out water, leak and out. you would know, okay, I've got a broken ball. Do you guys know what the little hole is for in the stables? Cell tail. So if it breaks somewhere in here, you'd never know it, but obviously it's now compromised okay. because it's broken, but now it'll be leaking and out. high pressure the, water. It will water. tell us. Right. <laughs> it's a problem. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Good question, whoever that was. I don't know. It's Mike. I don't know. But, yes, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What thank else? You for Any other questions? Any other? Anything? Thank you for hanging in there. It was nasty. I would ask for more, uh, more tents more, uh, or something. Uh, something. No, how about uh, so 1472? Is that a uh, service days or is that duration or both? Well, that would be service days. That's, yeah, that's so right. you have to have fire years and pressure yeah. in your boiler. Or most places. Like Reading and Northern would run out of 15 years before the 1472. No. Strasburg, some other places where they're running constantly, they run out of the service days. Way under, yeah. Yeah. Durango. yeah they, well, they what, might what get I'm, five years. So, so to, so to <coughs> what you're saying, it's service days uh, or 15, whatever. Yeah, it's yes. correct. Either yep, or, same yeah. thing, like oh. the annual, the annual needs to happen. They're spelled out. There's a 31-day inspection, a 92-day inspection, and then the annual. We might, depending how little or whatever we run this, we might only not even do a 31-day inspection. Uh, people like 113, they they just do their, their annual 92-day and 31 is all one form because they don't have those extra ones. Your Cumbrace and Toltec, your, maybe your Strasburg, some of those other guys would start hitting those other... I think I, one. I, guess Christmas. I think I just saw one list. You guys showing them like, you work all over the 113. Yeah, I think it's today. That, that TV house is still set. That's another one. You guys set it. Yeah, it's set, yeah. And there you are. You can go up there. 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 You can go up Right now, I'm not there. I got medical issues, but it's time when we move stuff and somebody, I, I get somebody a cab ride to a short jump and we move the car. Which is great. Like it's just, it's something that a lot of people don't get. Yeah. yeah, you know what? Like, you can actually talk to some of these guys, actually get more of an experience than you could back let, in the day. I let them blow the whistle. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can throw a Anybody else? Any questions? Nope. All right. Thank you, Chow. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Hell Home. Hell <laughs> Home! <laughs> <laughs> Tell Linda I love her. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> uh, usually, sometimes yeah. just sits there.